Yeah, I'm Paul Janess, author and editor. I've, uh, I've edited a couple of anthologies that are out, The Crimson Pact Volume 1 and Volume 2. And Volume 3 is uh, coming out soon, and Volume 4 soon to follow. There's going to be more on the way in the future. I've sold about a dozen short stories and a few novels. My Iron Dragon series is out. Book 3, The Secret Empire, just came out. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, it's doing well. It's available as for as an ebook and also as a trade paperback. And the first two are also available as ebooks and trade paperbacks. I primarily write fantasy, but I've strayed into uh, editing, and I'm really getting into urban fantasy and, and horror. So, which is one reason why I'm here at the World Horror Convention to recruit horror writers to write horror stories for upcoming Crimson Pact anthologies. So that's what I'm. You know, mostly doing here, although the World Horror Convention is just actually so much fun. I could not miss it since it's in the town that I live in, Salt Lake City, this year, like it was four years ago when I first came. So didn't I would never miss a World Horror if it was easy to go to, and I'm definitely going to go again in the future. So, so how many authors are in each of your anthologies? How many different authors write for you? I've got somewhere around 35 different writers between the four anthologies. The, the first one has 27 different writers, some flash fiction, some regular short stories, a couple of novellas. We've got some New York Times bestsellers, some mid-list authors, and some newbies. We started with an open call for submissions, and we kind of ran a flash fiction contest to see you know, the best stories get in. So there's a few flash fiction stories for newbies, and a few pros as well. And uh, quite a few of the stories have sequels in Volume 2 and then in also in Volume 3. Okay. So they, you know, the story ends, but you're like, hmm, I'd really like to know more or see what maybe happens next with these characters. So it, it's been fun to watch the stories you know, progress from Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. I really, I really like that. Sometimes short stories, you just don't get enough. You're just like, well, that was nice, but... Yeah. So now we can keep going with the character, and people will have novellas out of it in the end. So flash fiction, is that just uh, like two or three pages of whatever you can get in, or how does that work? Flash fiction, by definition, is 2,000 words or less. That's a little arguable, but flash fiction is, that's it's more like maybe up to eight, maybe four pages to eight pages. It can be a page. They, they call it micro-flash if it's, you know, really, really short. I mean, there's, there's two sentence, one sentence flash. The flash that I like is more on the order of four, four to six pages, okay. somewhere around a thousand to fifteen hundred words. And if, if with an open call, it's easier to deal with flash. If you, you do an open call for short stories, it's really hard to read that much. But if it's flash, you know, I can read a few pages and I can fix four pages yeah. as an editor. At, you know, a thirty pager, eh, it's harder to fix. So, yeah. Um, so in local. Like, um, on a horror convention, you know, being Utah being a horror convention, don't those kind of clash a little bit? Do you think, or how do you think the horror and the, the local, you know, uh, local makeup kind of fit together? I think that uh, there's a definite clash for sure. And I thought it was hilarious last night where I'm at the gross out contest, which is was the most fun that I had at the 2008 World Tour, and last night was hilarious. Were you guys? You guys weren't there, were you? Okay, well, it's horrifically disgusting stories by horror writers. It's, you know, they have like five minutes or less to read something really sick. And in the end, they get, you know, crowned emperor of, you know, the gross-out contest and get the t-shirt. Anyway, it's very prestigious to win. I didn't enter, but it was so funny because some of my friends who are of the predominant LDS faith who live in Utah would not go. Like, they just sat out in the hallway and wouldn't go, and I thought it was funny. And you know, hey, that's fine. I mean, you know, there was pornographic, disgusting stuff. Necrophilia. Hey, it was all there. It was sick. That's definitely a clash. But I think, overall, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, the horror writers came back to Salt Lake for a reason. They had so much fun in 2008 when World Horror was here that they wanted to come back. And the people here, the, the convention organizers, who are mostly Mormons, actually, put on a great convention, and the horror writers loved it so much they wanted to come back. So there's definitely some clash, but overall, I think it's I think it's fine. And the horror community here, people who love horror and horror films, it's big, actually. So, so the Crimson Pact, um, do you 
edit them. It's yeah. Methodology. You edit it, but you, you also you're also an author. You've written your own um, the Iron Dragon series. Yeah. So uh, tell us, being an author, um, like, is this published um, through a publishing house or self-published? Right. The the first two Iron Dragon books, the Golden Cord and the Dragon Hunters, I sold to a publisher and. Book one, The Golden Court, did really, really well. Best-selling book they ever had. It was like six printings. I felt like a little rock star, my first book. Book two comes out. They, they call me. They're like, oh, this, everything's going great. You know, we want to do the whole series. And then soon after that, the publishing people, the higher-ups, decided to cut their whole fantasy and science fiction line. So they, they tried to keep me. Like the, the lower-end editors and people tried to keep me. And the upper guys said, we can't keep a line open for one book a year. That, that does not make any sense. So I was orphaned, cast adrift in the sad world of, of publishing. And I looked around for a couple of years for a publisher, and I found that all the small presses were just going to give me nothing. And all the majors will not pick up an orphan series, because they didn't, they, they didn't edit the first two books. They don't want to deal with that. So I didn't know what to do, and luckily for me, the paradigm shifted in publishing, which, you know, I, the, during the filming, this is 2012, and right now in the past six to eight months, there has been massive changes. Ebooks are coming on, you can, you can do print-on-demand stuff, and get your book out there and bypass the traditional publishing model, which is 90% of the money goes to the publisher and 10% goes to the author. So with the, new, with the new model where you can go on Amazon and the author can get 70%, you can sell a lot less books and still make the same amount of money that you would with a traditional publisher. So luckily for me, technology caught up. The paradigm shifted. But i got to tell you, it was a crappy couple of years thinking the rest of my series is never going to come out. You know, and finally I decided I just have to do this myself. My fans are clamoring for the next book, which was mostly written anyway. I was just kind of waiting for a way to put it out. So anyway, that's, uh, that's you know, my sad stuff with, with uh, writing and publishing. And i got to tell you, if you're thinking about writing and you're not a strong person, forget about it. Because I'm a very strong person, and it about killed me to have to go through all this BS. So I would not recommend it if you're a faint of heart. Try short stories, maybe. Novels is a whole different ballgame. So with short stories, you can just find an editor like yourself and put it, maybe get it in their anthology. Exactly. Rather than I've doing all the distributing and everything. And exactly. And I've, I've done short stories with major publishers. I have like seven stories with Dot Books and some of their little paper, mass market paperbacks and five of their stories with smaller presses. And You know, the pay isn't bad for that. And it's a good gig because your, your story is in every bookstore in America. Everybody can get it. It's easy to get. It's audio. Not, odd, not all. Not audio. I meant to say it's... They put them out as ebooks. I mean, it's really great distribution. And if, what you brought up, the crappy thing with going independent is the distribution. So I, I'm on Amazon. You can e, you know, download it as an ebook or whatever, trade paperback. I, it's hard for me to get in bookstores. I can get into independent bookstores. But, you know. Barnes and Noble, not so much. Yeah, Barnes and Noble does not want to talk to you. Yeah. Even when I was with my other publisher, it was still hard. And they, were, they had major distribution. So it was. I. I I gotta tell you, the, the model that exists today is so bad. Independent bookstores in general are much better because those are like passionate people who love books. Right. And you, you can find great people at Borders, and you can find, well, you could, sorry. Um, you can still find great people at Barnes and Noble, but I don't know. The, the corporate thing is, it's not working out. Ebooks are 25% of the market now, and we'll see where it goes. There's always going to be print books, I think, but it's it's changing dramatically right now. Who knows what it's going to be in two years? Where do you think it might be in two years? I, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be fifty percent. Some people are projecting that ebook sales, the money is going to be fifty percent of the market. I don't think it's going to be fifty. It's going to start inching toward that. I, I really can't make an accurate prediction. Everybody who's made predictions about this, not everybody, but almost everybody, has been wrong about ebooks. They're 20 to 25 percent of the sales according to the stats from January, February 2012. There was a big deal at Christmas. You know, people got Kindles and started buying a lot of ebooks, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Until the kids 
don't use books in school until we've gone to like e-platforms and all the kids just get their textbooks on Kindles or whatever, there's going to be print books. Because in 20 years, are you going to be able to use your Kindle? No. It's going to be a piece of junk in the garbage. But in 20 years, you can still open this book and read it, and it's fine. In 50 years, you can still read this book. Kindle, iPad, hopefully you're gonna, we're going to figure out a way to just keep transferring the libraries to the next device and the next device and the next device. But uh, I'd rather smell that book and feel it, see yeah, the, the art. the experience of a book over, like, I'm an electronics guy myself, but I still like, I still like looking at a magazine. I still like feeling a newspaper. There's something to be said for the tactile experience, too. Absolutely. I mean, I love books. I love collecting books. And people have space issues. They don't have shelf space. Yeah. E-books is a good idea. You go on vacation, you know, to Europe, you bring your Kindle. You got six books on your Kindle. You know, or six, 1,600 books on your Kindle. Whatever. Right. Doesn't matter. Well, you can put almost unlimited storage on these books. So, it's the future, but I'm a traditionalist to a certain degree. I want to see the beautiful art. I want to look at the pages, I want to see the map, that's just how I am. So. Yeah, you can go to uh, thecrimsonpact.com to learn about how to submit to the next Crimson Pact anthology. Think demon stories, you know, scary stuff, no comedy, very, uh, very kind of hard-boiled, you know, think more like uh, Constantine the movie for a tone, the, if it's sci-fi, it'd be something like Aliens, a lot of urban fantasy, there's steampunk apocalypse, there's uh, a lot of really cool stuff in the, the Crimson Pact. A lot of great writers. And uh, you can go to crimsonpact.com or visit my website, pauljanes.com, P-A-U-L-G-E-N-E-S-S-E.com, and uh, get in touch. I'm also on Facebook, and I always answer my email. So look forward to meeting some of the people who watch this, and uh, I'll see you around. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Me too, Adrian.